Hey guys and gals, it's Jamila back here with another IK video. Uh, today's video we're going to be going over IK hacks. So these are things that are just going to make your life easier, uh, make your pockets fatter when you're playing the Infinity Kingdom game. So it might be good for new players to see this, might be even good for some veterans to see this. Um, near the end of the video, we're going to go through some alliance leader hacks, things you can do as an alliance leader to make you know, your alliance's life much easier. So let's get into the video. Alright, so the first hack is going to be the gathering hack. This is going to come in handy, you know, definitely when you get past castle level 20. You're going to be sending out your gathering forces all the time to get that food, that iron, that wood, um, that stone. So, what you can do is you want to speed up your gathering. If you're going to be hyperactive that day, you know, on IK all the time, or you have the ability to, you know, set an alarm and check back in, you can come over here to gathering expertise. Now, great idea to spend 1500 gems, maybe, you know, and have a 24 hour gathering boost. For 24 hours, you send your troops out, you're gonna gather much faster, um, they'll come back and then you just immediately, you know, send them out again to, to get their resources. One thing you can do though, is a one hour gathering boost for 100 gems. What happens when you do this? You know, as long as your troops start gathering, while this timer is going, they're going to get that speed buff the entire way through, right? So what we'll do is we'll get a one hour gathering boost. Use. Now I'm going to come out here. I'm going to search for my stone. Let's see, so it's three million resources. I'm going to send this gathering force out. Then I'm going to take my next one. Uh, looks like I need iron. Wow, that was lucky. And next, we're gonna do logging. Just all around luck today. And then the last one, we'll do stone. Again, because stone is very important. That's just a stupid boulder! It's not just a boulder! It's a rock! A rock! A rock! <laughs> <clears throat> Alright. So now I have all these guys out, they're going out, they're going to gather, they're going to start gathering within the first hour. So I get the gathering expertise buff. Um, where they gather 50% faster. So now what happens is, I'm going to need to check back into the game at about 5 minutes left, right? And recall all these guys, all my gathering forces. Send them back in, I'm going to get a partial amount of resources. Then. I'm gonna send them back out. Uh, most likely, if the if what's left in the node or the the tile is more than what the load is, or very close to what the load is, I'll send them right back out to the same one. Um, now, if they've already overgathered and now that node has less than what their load is, I'm gonna find a fresh resource tile um, so they can go ahead and fill their load up. Now, that, what that does is that gives us the extra hour the first time we gather, which obviously we're we're not gonna fill our troop load. Then we send them back out again, we can fill our troop load, and that entire gathering scenario is going to be done 50% faster. So it basically gives us an extra about one and a half mil um, of speedily or hastily gathered resources. Um, so definitely a good idea to make sure you're taking advantage of the gathering expertise buffs. Okay, so that's hack number one. All right, next up, is the builder hack. So what that is, is you come over here, you see you've got your main builder, then you've got your $5 builder, the second one you can buy. Then you've got the, the daily builder, right? The one that's gonna refresh every day, you can buy them with gems, or you can buy them with the builder contracts each day. So this builder, the third one, not necessarily the slot here, um, anyway, is the one that we're gonna be talking about. That's the one that's got the hack, right? So what you wanna to do to make sure that he doesn't go away after a day is get two builds started, right? So say I started my Bowman and my Spearman Barracks, right? Then you buy your third builder and you start a long build, just a real long one. In this case would be like your castle, near the end of the game, the barracks are a very long build as well. So start that build with that third daily builder. What happens is, 
um, he's gonna stay building for two, three, four, five, however many days that build's going. Then you have your two each day, you just keep using for regular stuff, whether it be resources or you know, barracks or you know academy, anything, right? And that third you know, daily builder is going to be working on your castle for three, four, five, even more days straight. So that is hack number two. Take advantage of the third builder, put them on the longest possible build you can put them on once you buy them. That way uh, he lasts longer and you're not having to keep you know, using your contracts or your gems to get them every day. Just realize these hacks are gonna hurt me uh, when people in my server watch that aren't in my alliance, but it's okay. I'm a man of the people. I'm here to help everyone out, you know? So, hack number three is with the troll. Alright, so one thing you want to definitely make sure you're doing every time it comes up is the Titantula, that spider. Uh, it's the best way to upgrade your gear and, and it also gives you keys to unlock dragon chests. So, obviously most people, if you're running a water team or a fire or earth or lightning, you can kill bosses to get, um, you know, gems to upgrade your dragon's abilities. You're gonna get a chest that appears here in the trove. Now, you're gonna have an abundance of keys that you get from this Titantula. That well, whoops, brought me all the way out to Nora. Anyway, you're gonna have a bunch of keys that you get. Um, and I'll pull them up in the inventory real quick just so you see what I'm talking about. But for the most part, your keys are going to unlock um, common dragon chests, which is one with no color. You'll have bronze ones that'll unlock the green dragon chests. I'm running a wind team, so I have an abundance of keys. I just I don't really use them. My, my dragon shards don't come from there. But normally, these blue keys and these purple keys for your chests are going to be almost gone. You're going to have barely any. The gold keys for the gold chests, you're barely going to have any as well. But the idea for this is to maximize your keys. Use them as best as possible. So you fill up your trove, right, that we just looked at, with three dragon chests. Right, so any of the green ones or the colorless ones, you're almost always gonna have a key to open them up. Go ahead, and open them up. If you have a blue or a purple that you don't have a key for, um, you can do one of two things. You can save it, just leave it there, um, and then go back and fill up your other two slots with, you know, green or, or colorless chests. Um, or you can just delete it. There's there's gonna be uh, when you're in here up above the chest, like right around here. There's gonna be an X. So you can just click that X, you'll go ahead and cancel out the chest, and then you can go kill a boss and get a fresh one. The idea is to farm the chests that you have keys for. So since you're usually gonna have colorless keys and green chest keys, just keep trying to farm those chests because you can just get your points so much faster, your shards rather, uh, so much faster to upgrade your dragon. Um, so like I do do earth a bit, so I'll kill the metallic fortresses and you know, the green chests are going to drop like 20 to 30, sometimes 40, um, depending on how high of a level you're killing, but about 20 to 30 uh, dragon shards, where the blue ones will drop around like 50, the purples can be up to like a couple hundred, I think. Um, so if I have the keys for the purple ones, yeah, I'll open them up right away. But a purple chest takes 12 hours in a timer to open. If I can get six, seven, eight, green chests in about an hour of just killing bosses and immediately open them with the keys, I'm going to be able to level up my dragon much faster, right? And that's going to get those abilities way higher. It's going to make my team stronger. I'm going to be able to hold myself better in arena, kill more difficult bosses, and then ultimately that gets you stronger as well, right? Because you're getting better gear. Um, so that is your dragon troll hack. All right, so next up is the market hack. So it's a small one but very much worth mentioning. You have this daily quest every day to buy five items from the market, right? Five items from the market. Um, if you're a free to play or a low spender, these two market refreshes that you get from it is, it's like literal gold. It's like getting two pieces of gold. Um, so what you do is say, you, you know, you do your market refreshes that your day comes with. You might buy your daily pack, your immortal promotion to get more market refreshes, but you're still not seeing the immortals you wanted. You didn't quite buy five things, right? You can actually just buy 
anything from the market. One, two, three. I right, say I bought Merlin, whatever. Three. Um, do one refresh, whether it be gems or use one of your refreshes that you already have. Buy four and five, right? I'm not going to spend green gems. Only spend purples. And only spend it on immortals. And here's why. So I just bought those immortals. I can literally come here and sell their shards in the alchemy lab for the same amount that I bought them for, right? So just make the purchase five times from market. Usually if you're not seeing anything you like, buy some immortals that you don't need. Come back here to the alchemy lab and refine those shards. And then you'll go ahead, you'll get your daily quest completed for buying five items from the market. And you'll have two more free refreshes that you can use to try and get some immortals you actually do need. Um, so that's our market hack. All right, so the next hack is gonna be for Arena. Just a small little one here. A lot of these are small and little. The first couple were the best. Um, the R6 ones at the end of the video are gonna be real good too though. So anyway, this for Arena, the only real hack I'd say for this is to wait near the end until reset to do your Arena matches. I know it's hard, you gotta be patient, but um, I'll usually do my first few, right? Um, you know, right when it starts or when I wake up in the morning, which is like halfway through the, the UTC day. I wake up around 13 to 14 UTC. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll at least farm my middles, you know, my, my level two opponent. I might even have a few pop up here in the third tier that I can beat. You know, I'm 14th strongest troop here in my uh, server, but I almost always have the top like four or five people show up in my, uh, on my third tier. Anyway, so what you do when you first start your arena, do as many as you can, at least for the second tier. If you can do any in the third tier, great, go ahead and do that as well. Um, but when you get to the point where you're only able to beat your first tier opponents, stop. Wait till it gets close to reset. Your rank's gonna be really high up. People are gonna just be beating you up all day now, and they're gonna be bringing you back down to earth to a lower rank. See, right now at rank 17, this is a little low for me. I'm usually in the top 10, but I'm going to be waiting until it gets close to reset and I'll be closer to rank like in the upper 20s. I've even seen myself around 31. And then almost all my opponents, I can go ahead and take out the third tier and get higher points to rank up higher and get my chests for the day, which for me especially helps out because this is the only place I can get Wind Dragon Crystals. But uh, for a lot of you, you're going to be happy to do that to get Harold or Cleopatra or whoever happens to be in the market at that time. It, you know, it rotates. Um, and this will let you kind of get more bang for your buck. You'll be able to do less arena matches and get more points. So, arena hack. Okay, so the next hack, ignore somebody being attacked there, uh, comes in the form of the Alliance Shop. So, obviously make sure you're donating in technology every day right each donation has a chance of giving you 50 alliance contribution a lot of the more experienced players definitely know about this but this is something that you're gonna want to do if you don't know about it is you see I have plenty of alliance tokens from donating daily I also donate with gems I'm a dirty gemmer what can I say uh, there's not a whole lot worth buying in here I mean if you're chasing after Frederick sure Definitely don't waste your alliance tokens on purple immortals. Um, some people, you know, say like they're saving for Yoshi, but by the time your alliance is level nine, you're probably gonna have Yoshi maxed out already. Um, space portals aren't bad if you do plan on leaving your server. This might be the only other thing I say, you know, go ahead and spend it on. Otherwise, save your tokens for the three hour speed up. It's a universal three hour speed up. You can buy one a day. Um, it's worth doing, right? You can spend your tokens on the 60 and 30 minute speed ups too and the 15, but it ends up really like whittling down your Alliance tokens. And then the next day, you're not able to afford your three hour, right? So for me, I see the best value out of the three hour speed up. That's the only one I buy each day. Um, on occasion, I may get like a teleport if I don't feel like burning my gems, but I, I generally, I don't like spending 6,000 tokens just for one teleport either. I'd, I'd really rather spend the gems if I have it. Next hack is in the Mysterium. 
Um, nice little small one here. This is just something you can get for a discount. Um, on pretty much every floor of the Mysterium, you'll see there's a merchant. On occasion, you'll have two merchants. On occasion, you'll have no merchants. It's a sad floor when there's no merchants. I cry just a little bit. <laughs> Hurts me deep. Anyway, uh, in this merchant, a lot of times you will see he sells a territorial teleport at a discounted rate. Normally, they're 500 gems per teleport. In here, you can get them for as low as 300 gems, which is great. You know, I, I pluck up my teleports anytime I see a merchant holding them. Um, while you're here, if there's any immortals that you are trying to build out and, and max their stars, you're going to be able to get their shards for a discounted gem rate as well too. So if you have the gems to spare, do it. I say do it. Get in there, uh, try and fill them up, buy them from the Mysterium on my server 19 uh, team. It would have taken me so much longer to even obtain Peter um, if I wasn't able to buy his shards in the Mysterium. I could not summon him for the life of me. Uh, a great part about these shards is you can buy immortals that you don't own yet and you can get their shards and then summon them once you get up to 60. So always keep an eye out for the merchant. If they have an immortal that you're chasing after, buy those shards with the gems. It's going to take you way longer to get them if you don't. Um, or if you do happen to summon them and you've been buying their shards with gems, you'll just have more um, ammo to sort of upgrade their stars as well. Also, Plume of Revenge is a wasted item. It doesn't really do anything. It lets you find the person that attacked you, but you can also find that in your battle reports for free uh, without using the Plume of Revenge. I'm really not sure what the point of these are. Um, and if you want to change your name, sure. I mean, wait until you can get the name change or the Lord rename uh, here in the Mysterium. There's no reason to pay full price to do it, right? Why pay full price when you can get it for discount? Okay, so that'll do it for this part of the video on sort of IK hacks as the solo player. Um, I've got a nice little secret part here. Uh, it's gonna be hacks for your R6s or something for you to suggest to your Alliance leaders in ways that can help you out. Um, the main one, I and mean, it's, it's a lot on the Alliance leader to try and keep up with, but hey, if you wanna be an Alliance leader, you need to be there to help your people out. And that is creating a mayor chat. We have a joke name right now uh, on this server. No mayor for you. Uh, and then you can even check like my server 19 account. So anyway, without going crazy on this server, you see uh, my server 19, we have mayor post. And all it is is just, hey, can I get the buff? Uh, can I, you can request treasure buff, research buff, build buff, dragon buff. Um, so let's take a look, I'll show you what these things do. So what do they do? Let's take a look. This is just one way to view them. So you see I have one person holding the technology upgrade speed. So that's 3% upgrade speed to your technology. So now the only reason I threw this in on this video instead of a, an exclusively R6 video is it's up to the Alliance members to ask for the buff. So they'll come in, you know, they'll go to the mayor, chat, Hey, can I get build buff, right? So I gave him build buff smiley. I would come down as the Alliance leader. I know this city has a build buff. I'll assign, you know, whoever a point. And then they're right there. They hold the build buff. They get a 3% building upgrade speed um, to their buildings, right? So the way 3% works out, it's about 48 minutes per day. So if you're doing a castle upgrade that's three, four, five days, you're talking three, four, five hours almost that's coming off of your build. It really saves you up with your timers, um, saves you a little extra boosters and gets your builds done faster. Um, the same premise applies to technology. You know, when you're doing four or five, there's a 14 day research. So that's almost a half a day. It's about a half a day knocked off of your research by getting the technology buff and then starting the research and then retiring from there. To retire, you just click on your face. If I was the one holding this, there would be a little red arrow there. I'd click the red arrow and it's gonna take me out of the mayor position so the next Alliance member can request it, start their build, and then just keep it going, right? So you're talking a ton of members in your Alliance that are gonna be able to cut off a lot of time 
to um, their build, to their dragon upgrade. You know, dragon can take 14 days sometimes. Um, so it really does help, it really helps a lot. There's also some for like healing and um, troop training. Which that's okay, it's not a huge buff, but you know, if you're gonna be doing mass healing and just you keep using your boosters over and over again to heal three, four, five, six, sometimes waves um, of dead troops, or wounded troops rather, the healing buff can be beneficial. Um, the other thing they'll request is positions within the governor, right? So treasurer is very much a hot commodity. Trying to limit your treasurer to holding it for one day only tops, and then they got to get rid of it and let the next person have a turn. Um, if somebody just got zero, they can request prosperity regeneration. Um, if somebody's out farming gnomes, they can request marshal, or if they're doing PvP, can request military officer. Um, and deputy governor's nice because it helps your seriously wounded heal faster. So any of those can be requested. If you hold a capital, the governor is the one to appoint there. So it's not always the the alliance leader. Right? I have two, um, an R5 and an R4 holding governor right now. So the other thing, um, since we're on the topic of chats, definitely do the mayor chat, take advantage of it. It's gonna come in, in, in handy very heavily. Uh, especially as you get in the late game and you start getting past castle level 30, these upgrades are... They are ridiculous. And then last thing, um, a targets chat. So especially for kill events, you know, throw up targets, castles that got juicy amounts of resources, juicy amounts of honor. Give them a place to attack, right? A lot of times, you know, you've got server governance that's protecting hives or protecting certain areas. So on your targets chat, you're just able to put out people that are nice and juicy. They can go down and give your people a lot of uh, good resources and good honor to level up. Other than that, um, that's about it. So thanks for checking out the video today. Hope some of these hacks help. Definitely, if you have any other hacks that you think um, are beneficial to the player, share them down in the comments below. This is just gonna be like a hacks version one video. I'm sure uh, a lot more are gonna come up now that I've made it and I'll get to hear some of y'all's ideas too. Like, I can't wait. Um, so definitely leave a comment down below, like the video, subscribe to the channel, please. And I uh, will see you on the next one. Peace. It's a big, beautiful, old rock. All oh, the pioneers used to ride these babies for miles.